everyone, welcome here. If you're new here, my name is Rebecca. If you're not new here, welcome back. I always do that. Welcome back. It's a bit dramatic, no? Thank you for coming back and watching another video. So in today's video, I wanna give you 13 tips for shopping like a minimalist. And specifically today, I wanna to talk about clothes shopping. So despite the fact that I am indeed a minimalist, I don't think that shopping is evil. In fact, I feel like I enjoy shopping more now than I did before I was a minimalist. I really love finding something that is perfect, that fits well, that's a quality piece, that's exactly what you need. And when you look at it hanging in your closet, it almost makes you smile. Like you like to touch it and you like to wear it. It just makes shopping a much more special experience. And just because you are a minimalist doesn't mean that you can't shop or enjoy the act of shopping. It's really the intention and the mindfulness that you bring to it. So I've split today's video kind of into two chunks. The first chunk is around the behavior of shopping and how that fits into your life and how you approach shopping and what it means to you. And then the second chunk is what to actually do and the questions to ask yourself when you're shopping. All right, with all that said, let's get started. Hey, noodles. Can I help you? I usually film sitting on a little stool but decide to sit on the floor today and I feel like Gypsy's like, jackpot. Give me all the pets. Okay, so in the first section, I wanna talk a little bit about the behavior of shopping and how it fits into your life and how to maybe amend some of your behavior so you stop shopping out of boredom or impulse and start being a little bit more intentional around it. So my first tip is to unsubscribe from retail emails. The best way to recognize if you need something is to feel that need come from within, to recognize the need when you're out living your life, not to open your email and have a brand tell you that you need this thing. I'll find a lot of times that I won't think that I'll need something and then I get an email from a brand and they're like, hey, don't you like this sweater? And I'm like, oh, I do like that sweater. I could use a sweater, right? But the thing is, if I actually needed a sweater, I would rather identify that need on my own than be triggered by an email to go out and buy it. So my tip is to unsubscribe from any brand's email, be it a clothing brand or otherwise. I like to do this as I'm reading my email. So if I'm going through my email inbox in the morning, I see a retail email in there, I'll just automatically open it and unsubscribe. My second tip is to avoid the trap of free shipping. And what I mean by that is those websites who are like, hey, spend $49 and you'll get free shipping. And if you're at $39, you're like, oh, I'll just buy something for $10 and then I'll save the shipping. But the thing is, then you have a thing you might not necessarily need or want or haven't been mindful or thoughtful about purchasing taking up real estate in your mind, in your house, in your closet. So when you're thinking about the purchases you're gonna make online, I like to budget for the shipping as part of what I'm gonna buy. So if I'm gonna buy a sweater, I might say to myself, okay, I have a budget of $60 for a sweater. So really I'm looking for a sweater that's probably more like 50 or $55 so that the shipping is included in what I've budgeted to buy that item. And I don't feel like I need to purchase more things just to get free shipping. My third tip is to not buy something just because it's on sale or take something just because it's free. If you haven't identified that you need something in your wardrobe or in your life, you probably don't need it just because it's also on sale. It can feel like a really good deal, but ultimately if it's not something that you really love and need, is it really a good deal to have it taking up real estate in your closet? And same thing with free stuff. Free stuff can be tough. I fall into this trap sometime where I look at something and I'm like, but it's free. But really you have to think about what the other cost of owning the item is, what the cost is to maintain it and clean it and to have it actually take up space in your house. Like you're paying a mortgage or a rent for that thing to have space. So just because it's free doesn't mean that it should be something that is cluttering up your life. My fourth tip is to reframe thinking about shopping as a leisure activity or as a social activity. I've definitely done this when I was younger, like in my 20s. It was definitely a thing to do with friends or a thing to do when I'm bored. But shopping without any direction or any intention and just for the act of shopping is definitely gonna land you with things that you maybe don't need, were not purchased intentionally. And also you might not get the best deal or the best quality because you haven't taken the time to really research the product. You're just kind of window shopping and grabbing things. My fifth tip is to know your shopping triggers. 
particularly when it comes to clothes. I feel like a lot of us, myself included, shop when we're having particular feelings or emotions. That can be around our own confidence or body, or even just in our life if we're having a very happy day or a very sad day. These things can make us want to decorate our bodies in a certain way. I'm not necessarily saying that's a bad reaction to have, but understanding what triggers you and propels you to shop impulsively and spend money without thinking about it can help curb some of that behavior. So next time you hop in your car to go down to the shops or start scrolling online or whatever, just take a moment to pause and be like, wait a second, what is it that I'm feeling that's driving me to do this right now? Tip number six is to think about what else you could do with the money you're about to spend. So if you're in a store or you're on an online cart and you're about to buy, say, a hundred dollar pair of jeans, pause for a second and say, what else could I do with a hundred dollars? So for instance, you could buy yourself a cup of coffee every day for a month. Is that true? What's a hundred divided by 30? Three dollars and 33 cents? It's like about how much a cup of coffee costs, right? Math. Or you could say, I could have a nice dinner out with my partner or my friend. You could put it towards travel, you could put it towards some sort of experience. But measuring that $100 against what you'll get for a pair of jeans and other things you might want in your life will help with the evaluation process of, do I really wanna spend the $100 on a pair of jeans? Tip number seven and the last tip in our first section is to establish a waiting period. I've mentioned this a bunch of times in other videos. I am a huge fan of the waiting period. So what I personally do is I have a spreadsheet where anytime I feel like I have a need for something or I see something that I might want to buy, instead of just clicking purchase or instead of just taking it home from the store, I will put it on the list. Usually for at least a week or two, there's been things on that list for months. And in some cases, there's things that are on the list for a couple days. But the point is, it's not an immediate like see and purchase cycle. You're giving yourself a little bit of breathing room to think about the purchase and be a little bit more intentional and mindful with actually buying things. Okay, so let's get into the second half of the video, which is when you are actually going to purchase something, specifically clothes or something for your wardrobe, how do you go about doing that with a minimalist mindset? So the next tip is to know your personal style. This one is tough, at least for me it's tough, because I feel like I have a pretty defined personal style. I know what I like and I know what I think looks good on me. But the thing is, is like when you see somebody else wearing something, particularly someone whose job it is to model clothing, it can sometimes trick your brain into thinking that you also want that thing. When you see somebody else with great style wearing something that they look amazing in, it's hard not to want to put that thing on yourself. So I don't really know that much about fashion. I know what I like, but the way that I've helped define my personal style in a way that helps me in my minimalist mindset is to attach words to my style that I can then look at a piece and say, does this match my words? So words that I've chosen to define my own personal style are things like simple, the bohemian, edgy. So when I'm shopping, I can look at a piece and say, does this fit into those category of words? And that's going to help me really evaluate if it fits my wardrobe and my style, or if I'm just being cast under the spell of the beautiful model with great style. So the next few tips are actual questions to ask yourself to help with the evaluation process when you're getting ready to purchase something. So one thing I like to do is to ask myself, when are the specific occasions that I would wear this piece? And I like to get more specific than like, I would wear this to work or I would wear this to a wedding. I would say things like, I would wear this to work on a day where I don't have any client meetings, or I would wear this to work on a day where I'm meeting a really important client. Instead of just saying, I would wear this to a wedding, say, I would wear this to Julie and Jen's wedding on this day. I have an actual wedding to wear this to, not a fictional maybe wedding in the future. That kind of thing. So instead of living in the hypothetical world of, yeah, I can see myself wearing this maybe to work or maybe to yoga. Try and think of the actual times when you would wear it. The next question I ask myself is, what is the weather when I'm wearing this? Again, being super specific about it. So you might say, oh, this is a really great piece for really hot days. But maybe you live in Alaska and there's only like 10 hot days a year. And the hot day doesn't line up with the occasions that you just identified. 
right? Or maybe you live in the desert like me and you're like, these boots would be super cute on a day where I have to walk to work in the rain. It doesn't rain here. I don't need that. So question yourself on what the weather is going to look like when you would actually wear that piece of clothing is going to help you evaluate if you'll get enough use out of it. The next question is one that I use all the time, which is what else am I going to wear it with? Even if you have a neutral palette in your closet, thinking about the specific outfits that you would put that piece with is going to help you realize how much use you're really going to get out of it. So that's another great thing about having a smaller or minimalist wardrobe. I can play through my entire wardrobe in my head and figure out, do I have enough things that go with this that make outfits that I would like? So that's going to keep you from falling into the trap of like, oh, I bought these overalls, but I don't have a shirt to go underneath and I don't really have anything to go over top. and I don't really have any shoes that match. And now you've bought three more things to go with the one piece that you just bought. So when I'm looking at an item, I like to run through what am I going to wear with it? What are the shoes that I'm going to wear with it? So I can really envision the outfit coming to life, what the weather is going to be when I'm wearing it and what I'm doing when I'm wearing it. <laughs> Sometimes when I say out loud the things that I do in my head, I'm like, am I crazy? That's a lot of things to think in your head. You got a lot going on up there. I don't know. This is just how I live my minimalist life. All right, my next tip, number 12, is to read reviews. If you're shopping online, reviews are the best thing. Going back to my earlier tip of seeing something on a model, wanting to have that in your life, wanting to reflect that in your own personal style. It can be easy to be like, that's beautiful, purchase. But if you stop for a moment, read some reviews of what non-model humans think about the actual piece of clothing, it's a great way to evaluate whether or not you should bring it into your life. People are usually compelled to write reviews for one of two reasons, either because the thing is amazing or the thing is terrible. And both opinions are great to have. So if I'm gonna read reviews, usually what I'll do is I'll read like three or four five-star reviews and then three or four one-star reviews. And if there's themes that start to pull through that, like the material is thin or not worth the money or on the other end, like beautiful piece, I feel like that's when you can start to take that as actual input for your purchase decision. All right, number 13 and the last thing on my list of how to shop like a minimalist is to think about the longevity of an item. And this really has to do both with the quality of the item, but also the trendiness of the item. One of the best things you can do is invest in quality over quantity. Nice pieces that are beautifully, sustainably made that are going to last you a long time. But if that piece is super trendy and something that you're going to feel outdated wearing in six months or a year, that quality piece might not be worth the investment. So when you're thinking about the longevity of an item, it's good to think about both sides of those coins, both will it physically last, is it a quality piece, but also will it stand the test of time in terms of not being uber trendy and something that I'm gonna feel outdated in, in six months. All right, those are my 13 tips of how to shop like a minimalist. If you have any tips of your own, please leave them in the comments down below. I always love to hear what you guys have to say. I feel like I learn so much from you all. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below. That really helps my channel a lot. I put out new videos every week, so I will see you next Tuesday. Bye everyone. Video. So we should actually look at our notes. Oh, hello. But. In your face. That shopping is evil. evil, evil. Okay, so why am I so much shorter now? So dramatic. Emma Min Minimum.